Hey friends, today I'll go through all of your questions that have been piling up now for a few weeks on investing, housing in Denmark, everything Denmark related, traveling, work, you name it, it's all here in my phone and I'll be reading through those questions while sipping a bit of tea. So let's go to the first one, which is what am I investing on at the moment? I can tell you I have not invested since August and I'm recording this in December. And if I would be investing, I would still do the same things I have been doing before, which is iShares, S&P 500, iShares World, iShares Emerging Markets, and the SPAR Index Denmark. So these are four index funds, and you can find them in Nornet, you can find them in Saxo, in any broker in Denmark. And what you need to know about these ones is that basically cover the whole world and the whole market in a, I would expect, well-diversified way. And I do mostly on S&P 500, a bit on more on the world, and just like the tail of my bar of my funds on emerging markets, and also it's in Denmark. In my opinion, that's still the fundamentals things I would be doing if I would be investing, with the only caveat that, especially over the last few months, I have been thinking and just coming to the realization more and more that if you want to get really rich in Denmark, Stocks, we're not going to tell you the long way because of the taxation. I mean, after having, let's say, a million krona in investments, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to keep investing. I mean, yeah, of course, if you have a lot of money, do it. But the taxes are so high that just it's not it's not the right place to do, put your money. But instead, for example, you see the houses appreciating in value and the fact that you can sell a house tax free is just the incentives are so skewed into that direction, so I'm thinking like, hey, I should I just buy a bigger house just for the sake of it? And then whenever it eventually goes up in value, that's a big tax gain that I can even get leverage on. Anyway, something I have been thinking. In all cases, what I want to tell you as well is that the reason I have not been investing is because I have been spending a lot of money. So it's not because I am afraid of the market or anything like that. It's just that I've been traveling a lot with the two kids, so that has been expensive. And I got this Invisalign teeth treatment that also has been super expensive and I wanted to shore up cash as well. So I have a lot more cash now than I had a few months back. So those are basically the three reasons I decided to stop investing over the last few months. I expect to start investing again, let's say January next year. How much so? I don't know. But still, that's something I want to continue to keep doing it as well. I was also kind of planning about cash in the sense that, hey, are we going to stay in this home? Are we going to buy a new home? I don't know. For the moment, not in a rush at all. We're not putting a home on sale or anything, but it was also good to just have plain cash, easy accessible. Second question is on the housing outlook for 2024. So my opinion is the same as always been, and that is that if you're looking for a long-term buy, just go for it. If you're looking for a short-term win, don't. There's a lot of people that are expecting that the prices will go down in the first part of the year now that the taxes have like bar kicking in a few weeks and all else you know equal means that if you are not in a rush you could wait a little bit but on the other hand again if you are looking for the long term i think like a five percent ten percent or whatever drop in the short term that can easily be reversed by the end of the year yeah it's nothing that you should be super worried about and i can tell you myself like while being happy in our, my current apartment I'm keeping an eye on if there's something bigger. I don't want to live in a house because I don't want to fix any house, but like if I find a bigger apartment or something around those lines very close to where I live, I'm interested. But again, it has to be the right opportunity. So I can tell you like, even myself, I would be at something early next year if the right opportunity comes. And more on that in future videos, because I have been learning about how is it this second home buying situation? Because I have only bought once my home and what happens when you buy again? What happens when you need to sell your apartment? What happens, can you sell before? So you need to sell your apartment before you buy a new one or you want to buy before you sell. So all these shenanigans, I have been learning a lot about that and I'll be making videos about it early next year as well. Next question is, Mario, you have been on a break for one month. Where are you? So good question. And true, it has never been that I took more than a week or even two weeks off YouTube. And it has never meant to be this case, but just three things happened. First, I got a new job. Same company, same team, but at a leadership angle, which I really wanted to do. 
plus a new manager. So I have been putting a lot of energy and a lot of passion because I'm really interested about this new job to totally nail that. And it has been like working longer hours and trying to prepare myself, reading more about it. So I have been using a lot of my spare free time to learn about this because it sounds fun. Then in October and November, a lot of the kids, a lot of the time the kids were sick. And then like, since all the brands were bored, my wife's traveling and so on, so it's a bit complicated. But normally that could happen in any, any case and I will still be able to pump videos because I like it. But most excitingly, I have been working on an online course called the Second Salary, which is about how to earn money online in Denmark. And there was supposed to be like, what, 20, 30 videos, but it ended up being over 100 videos now that I'm begging for that course. And I'm using a lot of the time that I would be using to script and prepare YouTube videos to do this course. And that is researching, writing the scripts, filming the videos, editing some other stuff. And I think it's turning out quite well. It's up for sale now if you're interested as well. It's not fully complete at the moment I'm recording this. So I'm selling like the first parts of the course and the next ones are coming in a couple of weeks. But the pitch is that I have been making money online since 29, it feels like 29, no, since 2009. So it has been like 14 years or more that I have been making money online, which is absolutely nuts. So I have been an original digital nomad before anyone was a digital nomad. And like, of course, then I had a normal career and so on, but like I have been money, making money online one way or the other for like a super long time. And I'm just trying to consolidate all that knowledge into that course, which I think it's really fun. And so many people were asking me about it. So it's not a course about YouTube. It's not a course about all this like get rich quick scheme, but it's like a consolidation of everything I have learned in 14 years, like one for 14 years of like doing online businesses and so on. And like how to make it in a way that you can do an online business while you have a full-time job, while you have two kids, while you travel as much as I do. So that has been a lot of my slack being on onto that. Plus I have updated my online store. For those of you who don't know, I sell some online courses on investing, on buying a house. Now I have added a community forum to this thing, nicer website. There's a, soon a blog happening as well. So there's a lot of things that I have been putting in place. It has just been taking a lot of energy. And I actually like, yeah, I didn't get to pump up enough videos or at least I could, but then I just wanted to make sure that I get high quality videos. Also, as part of this new suite of products that have been created, I made something called the Mastermind, which is a little program where people can subscribe per month. And then we get a Q&A with me live each month. And for example, now for December, the people that are part of this Mastermind, we will go and meet in person in Copenhagen or hang out for a beer for a couple of hours. And there are benefits like this of being part of this community. Plus, I have made a mastermind vault with a lot of videos on productivity and things that I'm really passionate about that are not necessarily investing or Denmark specific. The people have been asking me and just bumping into this vault. So whenever you sign up to the mastermind, you'll get access to all this back catalog of things that I have been creating. If you're interested, again, check it out in the video description. That said, I'm now more and more confident that you can really have it all. You can have like a fancy job, you can have a side hustle and a family and traveling and so on. And then I'm exploring how to articulate that into a new video with all my new learnings as well. Now, back to pitch over, back to a new question. So investing in the short term. So a lot of people have been asking me about, and that like it's really a lot of people have been asking me about Hey Mario, I'm in Denmark for one year, should I invest? Or I'm in Denmark for two years, should I invest? I'm in Denmark for three years, should I invest? My answer to all these people is yes, why not? Specifically, if you have never invested before, even if Denmark is not the best country in the world to invest, you learn how to invest. And that's, that's a good skill to have because then whenever you move to a new country, basically like you need to learn about the taxes and regulations, but the way index funds work and the way you handle your portfolio and the mental things around that, that's something you already learned. Plus, if you're only here for a few years, just open an Actias para Conto that's capped at that 17% tax. You don't need to put a lot of money. That's up to a hundred something thousand krona, 106,000 krona that you can put in. And even though you get taxed at the end of the year and you tax on unrealized gains and that sucks, at the end of the day, the taxes at 17% are not so high. 
So, I mean, why not? Go for it. And when you leave Denmark, there's an exit tax. You need to close your investments, pay the taxes, or you can transfer your investments outside, but then you need to pay the taxes on the gains until then. But again, like if you gain, that's great. Why not? Next question was about Nordnet and transfers to and from Nordnet. And basically transfers from any investment broker to another investment broker. So people have been asking me, can you transfer from Nordnet to Saxo, your stocks, your index funds? Or can you transfer from a foreign broker to a Danish broker or from a Danish broker to a foreign broker? And the answer to all these questions is yes. It's quite complicated. It's not just a few clicks as you do with some other things like crypto. But my understanding is that, yes, you can, and the exact steps on how you'd go around to doing that will depend from broker to broker, and the same with prices. So for instance, if you're moving to Nordnet, what I read is that, for example, if you're moving from like a foreign broker to Nordnet, there's a special form you need to fill in, then there's some waiting time to process things in this form, but you know, then it's kind of done. But to be honest, like, Seems to be that it's quite expensive, seems to be that it's quite cumbersome. And I wouldn't really do this unless you want to avoid that taxable event. Because when you sell a stock and buy it again, that's a taxable event. You need to pay taxes on the sale. And then when you buy again, it's kind of, it resets. But as in Denmark, all investment funds or like all index funds, not in, like, but yeah, all index funds are taxed and realized gains at the end of the year anyway. It just doesn't make a big difference in my opinion. So. I would just you know, buy and sell. You just need to put everything in the balance and see what would be the most expensive to you. So yeah, if you do transfer of individual stocks where you're not taxed on a realized gains, you can definitely then do the transfer, but you should maybe check with brokers to brokers to understand that there's definitely not a taxable event. And again, it might depend from broker to broker and from country to country. So just be 100% certain of this. People also have been asking me, I can see here, pensions in Denmark. So I can tell you about pensions in Denmark, about my setup, what I have myself, and I can tell you that there are different schemes. So the thing I have myself, and it's what a lot of experts in Denmark have, and basically anyone who comes to work in a big company in Denmark, is that you get your salary, let's say the salary is 100, and then you get on top of that salary, so not as what you negotiate with a company, you say you negotiate a salary of 100, then what you get on top of that salary, in my case, is 11% in pension. So if I get 100, then I get another 11, so 111 as a total package. That 11 goes straight into my pension, and I don't really touch and see that money until I'm 60 something. Yes, or I don't know, so I, it's super, I don't remember, it's a long way. And, and then on my, of, the, of this 100, that is basically my, normal salary, my pre-tax salary, I would still pay 5% of those, of that money, to the pension myself. And I can't opt out of that. I asked in the past and you can't. So basically, in my case, I get 16% in pension, 5 from myself and 11% from the company. Some companies do more, some companies do less. And again, like, it depends on, varies from case to case. I know I have received, for example, in the past job offers where I got no pension at all and some that had even a bigger pension than I have now. So again, your mileage may vary, it's up to you then what you see. Now, there's some special pension schemes for expats where you get cashed out the pension as a, some, something like a salary. I don't know much about those yet, so I'll do a future video about it in the future. Just know that yes, things like that exist, but then best to ask HR and to ask your company. Now, one last note on pension is that Denmark is the only country, as far as I know, maybe there's another one, but the only country that I know that once the money is in the pension pot, you still get taxed on it. And the way you get taxed on this money in the pension is that at the end of the year, if the pension went up by whatever in value, the investments in the pension, then you still have to pay a tax on that gain to SCAT, or they will be automatically deducted from your pension. So it's unrealized gains on the pension each year. Honestly, that's a bummer, but it, well, that's the way it is in Denmark. Last question, and this is a self-serving question. So, Mari, what are your travel plans for, and the winter plans? So, those of you who know me, I travel a lot. I also just told you that I'm not saving enough or investing enough because I have spent so much money traveling. So it's like, hey, what's going on? So I was just in Mexico for a week or a bit more than a week. Just came back a few days ago. 
I was meaning to shoot this video in Mexico. I uh, actually, I even shot this video in Mexico, so we have a bit of a change of scenery. Or I like to do these Q and A's when I'm on the road. We have one in Saudi Arabia, one in like crazy places. I was like, okay, let's do one in Mexico. Yeah, the camera just didn't cooperate. And when I thought I had a video, I just didn't. So maybe I'm just gonna put one little piece of the video here just for fun, but yeah, didn't work out. So I'm recording it again here. And we're going then to Estonia for Christmas. My wife is from Estonia, so that's colder and darker and than Denmark, but sometimes with snow and it's very nice. And then going again to the, the Americas, so to Florida and then to the Caribbean for two weeks or a bit more than two weeks in the second half of January, which I'm really excited about as well. So hopefully you see some tan and hopefully like doesn't go away and by the time I'm in the Caribbean again, it gets reshuffled. And I want to finish with one tip on this is that people ask me as well also, how do you survive winter in Denmark? And one of the biggest tips, and there are many more tips in this video that is gonna be linked here, is that just leave Denmark in winter as much as possible. So if you had opportunity, and luckily I have, is take your three, four, five weeks of holidays between November and January. It's the best time to leave. It's nice to be here for Christmas, but beyond that, November, January, let's get out. See you.